The Generate DDL by Entities feature allows developers to convert entities into DDL statements in a couple of clicks. It can also generate both initialization scripts to create a database schema from scratch and differential DDL to update the already existing database in accordance with JPA entities. Why do we need this feature if we can generate DDL to create or update a database just by setting the DDL auto property to create or update? Here are three points explaining why we should avoid using DDL auto. First, we have no control over the DDL before its execution. Second, there is no way to set up proper Java to database types mapping. And third, attribute converters and Hibernate types are not supported. So when we use the DDL auto feature, we just don't get a proper database schema. In contrast to it, JPA Buddy knows about types mapping, attribute converters, and so on. Let's see it in action. We have the blog application that is configured to perform automatic database update during startup if the JPA model changes. Assume that now we need to store a user's email. With JPA Buddy, we can add the email field to the user entity and mark it as mandatory. Now, let's start the application. As we can see, the application startup has failed. The error message tells us that the DDL statement execution failure caused this. The reason is simple. The modified table already contains data. When we add a new column, the database populates the email field with null values for every existing record. Since we have a NOT NULL constraint added to the new column, this behavior causes a constraint violation error. With JPA Buddy, we have a better way to synchronize our database with JPA entities. First, we need to disable automatic DDL generation and execution, but allow Hibernate to check if the schema is compatible with the JPA model. To do this, we set the DDL auto property to validate. To get scripts for the database update, we need to select the Generate DDL by Entities action in the JPA structure panel. To generate an update DDL, we choose the Existing DB Update option from the menu. As we can see, JPA Buddy generates several DDL statements to add a non-null column. We need to specify the default value for the new column, and Buddy allows us to do it. Let's fill it up in the preview window. Now let's select the place to store the generated script. We can choose a file, scratch file in the IDE, or clipboard. Let's copy it to the clipboard to paste and execute it in the DB console. Now we can paste the script and run all the statements. The database is updated. Let's start the application and see the updated database with default data in the new column. It worked like a charm. One more thing. If the DDL auto configuration property value is set to update, Hibernate does not generate drop statements at all. Let's see how this behavior causes another undesired issue. First, let's revert the DDL auto property value to update. Then, we just remove a non-null attribute in the comment entity code and start the application. As you can see, the attribute remained in the database. Now, let's create a new entity and save it. The insert statement fails because we violate a non-null constraint for the column that doesn't even exist in our entity. JPA Buddy won't let this happen. It generates proper DDL to remove the column. Let's call the IntelliJ IDEA Generate menu, and JPA Buddy will create a DDL for the column removal. Please note that the drop statement is highlighted in red color because it can cause a data loss and cannot be rolled back. Now we can execute it there. It worked like a charm. Now let's ask Hibernate to perform a JPA model validation against DB schema and see how JPA Buddy can help you if the database is not in sync with the data model. First, we add another attribute for our user entity, telephone number, and start the application again. Hibernate encounters a mismatch between the model and the database and fails with the exception. JPA Buddy can detect JPA-related issues right in the stack trace. 
Moreover, Buddy explains the problem and can provide a fix for it. Copy the DDL and execute it in the DB console. Now we can restart the application. Great! Everything works smoothly. Now we know how to generate DDL for database creation and update with JPA Buddy. I hope all these features will make your work easier and more joyful. Thank you for watching.